So in this video, we're going to be looking at more features of the Behringer BCF2000 control surface being used with Pro Tools. And in this case, it's Pro Tools 11, and I'm on a Windows 8 operating system. So here we are in Pro Tools 11 already, and we already have our control surface set up. As you can see, I'm controlling the faders. Now, if you need to know how to set up your BCF2000 to run with Pro Tools, be sure to watch the first video, and that will show you exactly how I have my control surface set up right now in Pro Tools. But let's go ahead and look at some other options and features that we can do with the BCF2000. So we already know that we can adjust the faders, we can adjust the panning, we can of course also play back, stop, you know, use our basic transport functions. But we can also do quite a bit more, like I just did there. So if I hold down the edit button, now you'll see this button up top has a light showing. Well, if I click the other button, that switches me back over to my mix page Again, if I hold down the edit button and now I hit the button to the right on the very top, that takes me back to my edit page. So that's the edit button and then you can toggle back and forth between the mix and edit pages with these top two buttons. Really cool. Now we already know we can arm a track by pressing down on our rotary encoders. We can also select that track by holding down the edit button and then pushing down. Now you see audio track one is selected. If I hold down my edit button, now audio track three is selected. And now I'll hold down the edit button and I'll press the leftmost button on this lower row of buttons. So edit and then press. And now that pops up my transport. So we can use this to toggle our transport on and off. Hold down the edit button and press the other button up here to the right. And that shows our memory locations pops up. So now I'm going to play back. And while this is playing back, I'm going to hold down the edit button I'm going to press the rewind button and mark an endpoint. There we go. Then I'll hold down the edit button, press fast forward, and now I've just marked an out point. So I'll stop, and now when I play back, I'll have that loop since I already have my playback set to loop. Really cool. So we already know we can press record to record regularly, but we could also hold down the edit button and then press record, and that will take us into quick punch mode, and then we could record from there. And you can toggle that on and off just by using the edit button and the record button. So we still have our in out points on the screen there as you can see. And now we're going to use the BCF2000 to take that selected piece of audio and we're going to, let's just say, cut it. So I'll hold down the edit button and I'll be using these last four buttons in the solo mute area. So the top two and then the bottom two right here. So I'll hold down edit and when I press the button here, we just cut that audio out. Now if I want to go back, I can simply press the button that says learn on it, and that is undo. So now I'm going to hold down edit, and I'll press this button here on the bottom row. And now I've just copied that selected audio. So now I'm going to use my fast forward, and I'll fast forward to the very end here, and I'll hold down edit, and I'll press this button here right next to the last one. And now we've just pasted that audio right from our control service. And of course we could undo that using learn, or we could hold down the edit button and press the last button on the top row, and that is delete. Now you saw I used the fast forward and rewind to get to the end of my track. I actually don't have to do that. Again, we can hold down the edit button and I'll press stop. And that takes me to the beginning of my track. So I can hold down the edit button and then play, and that takes me down to the last bar. So we'll go back to our mix page, so we'll hold down edit, now we're back on the mix page. Let's go ahead and hide our transport. So we can adjust our faders. We already know we can bank. So now I'm controlling these eight aux tracks. Now I'm controlling these eight instrument tracks. But we can also move one fader at a time. So I'll hold down the edit button and then I'll press the button I would usually press to bank. And that shifts me over one. So now we scroll back. So now my first fader is not controlling audio one, it's controlling audio two. So now I can bank back and that will take me back to controlling audio one down through audio eight. Again, hold down the edit button, press over. And now my first fader is controlling audio two. Do it again. Now my first fader is controlling audio three. Scroll back here so you can see that. Audio three and aux two is the last one we have of our one through eight. And you can do the same thing going backwards. So I, I'll just go forward a bit and then go back. So now our first fader is controlling audio five and our last fader is controlling aux four. And you can of course bank as usual if you want. 
Now we're back to controlling one through eight of our audio tracks. So I have some buses open here, so let's pop these open. So now we have our four sins open, which is bus five, six, seven, and eight. And now using these four buttons in this area here, if I tap the one up top, you see it says SA, so that's send A. And you see as soon as I press that, the lights for my rotary encoders have changed. So now if I start to turn my rotary encoder, you'll notice that I'm adjusting my first send. So it's bus five. And you notice the lights stay on as well to give me an idea of where I am. Just the second rotary encoder, third, and the fourth. So that's pretty cool as well. If I hold down on the button, you'll see it shows me number five is my first bus. Pretty cool. So now we'll bank over to our aux tracks, and now the four buses we have on screen are not showing on our control surface, but we do have two showing. So let's open those buses up. So now again, we have send A. So send A is the very top area we have, and E would be the bottom. So these are in A, and we can switch over to B, C, and D, which we don't have any on this bank, but we can control those as well, just as we did before. Now we'll bank over to our eight instrument tracks on send A. My first send is number 63, which is correct. That's the one at top here. So let's open all these up. So now we have those six sends open and we're on send A. So I hold down, it's showing me send 63. That's the first one. So I'll start adjusting. All right. And again, we're on A. So the next send on A is send 95. You see that's on instrument track number two. We can adjust that. So then we'll go down to group B. And if I hold down, we'll see it's 64 is the first one and the only one in this case. So then we're adjusting that send. We'll go on to C. It's showing me send number 66, which is correct. And then on to send D. And there are two on send D, one on instrument track two and one on instrument track four. 103 and 87. So we're adjusting 103, then skip over and here's 87. And we can still adjust our faders too. And if we want to get back to our normal operation, I can just click the store button and then I'm back to adjusting my pan knobs as I would usually. So that is several more things you can do with your BCF 2000. Really cool stuff, really quick and easy to get to, all kind of different parameters. Drop in our in point, out point, cut that out, maybe we'll go down to the end of our track here and then paste that in, really cool and really fast, right from our control service. And of course we can still do our solos and our mutes just as we did before. Really cool. So make your full bank or just bank one at a time. Get the exact control that you need.